you and your terrific audience. We were, your terrific audience, we were on the phone yesterday with Laura Trump when the news broke. So we had her take live as it happened. Um, what is your take on Tim Walls being the VP? Yeah, I'll go a step further than you. I think Trump got away with murder. Um, I, I can't think of a pick that sends a worse message to the Democratic base and to people who think Democrats are going to win. Um, and I can't think of a more beatable person. Um, I don't see how this doesn't totally dissipate the Kamala momentum that was, you know, un undeniable. Um, I, I always thought it was, I, I haven't been as scared as some other people in my life who have been deeply concerned about the energy around Harris. I just, I don't think it's going to sustain for the next four months. Um, but uh, th this is it. I mean, this was a just uh, dodging a bullet is mild on this one. Van Jones even admitting that Walls yeah. is easy to define, as opposed to maybe a Josh Shapiro. Um, and we've we've rattled through a bunch. Of, a bu I mean, the top three for me are tampon Tim, tampons in boys' bathrooms across the state. Um, yeah. Sanctuary state for uh, trans youth. Yeah. And. Uh, illegal driver's license for illegal aliens. And then Michael Watley brought up, of course, the Minnesota, um, Minneapolis, George Floyd riots. But so sure. those four things, like what, what are we talking about here? Is there anything else that climbs to the top of the list for you? Yeah, those are, those are really good ones. Uh, it's interesting because I, uh, I, you think about this pick, and this is a hard left pick in Kamala Harris's been defined as a hard left person because of the 2019 uh, survey that said she was the most leftist person in the Senate. She was only in the Senate for a couple of full years. Uh, and she managed to distinguish herself amongst the rest of the socialists in that party as being even more left. And then she picked a guy who's undeniably the left of her, which is, it's just, it's just how could we get so lucky? It's they, <laughs> this is not a leftist country. And to pander to the far left of your base um, is just, it's just, we're just very fortunate. I mean, look at last night. What happened last night? What's the other big political news? Cory Bush losing a primary. You see, the country is sending a signal we're not that hard left. It's the Biden tacked left over his career. And he went from a senator that was, a, he was a bad senator, but he was not, I, I don't think universally regarded as a bad senator. I think anyone can look at the Biden presidency honestly and see it as effective. He was completely ineffective uh, in anything important. He got, he got a lot of stuff done because he always, he knows how to do that. The stuff he got done was terrible for the country and it didn't work. It's, the borders were open, uh, crime went up in major cities in a lot of ways that uh, we got. Uh, the, the Biden inflation, huge economic insecurity, huge levels of depression, fentanyl overdoses. I mean, this, the stats are terrible for him. So, what, what's the move? It's putting two far left people to run? It is so obviously stupid. I'm semi shocked. Mike, Mike l l let, me, let me give you something to illustrate how bad of a pick I think this is. Okay. There were people who reached out to me, multiple people, and I don't think this is true. I don't think this is this analysis is correct. Well, multiple people reached out to me suggesting they were throwing in the towel. Yeah. Literally. They, they weren't going to sacrifice someone good because they were so convinced they're going to lose. Now, I don't think that. I don't want to make the audience cocky. But the fact that that was, that was discussed in dead yeah. serious terms yesterday <laughs> uh, makes you think that we couldn't have done any better. Well, okay, so what, where were you and what was your initial reaction when you found out? Um... I actually took it seriously, uh, but I don't, I don't, uh, because I'm, the audience knows this, uh, people who listen when I was the host, I, I try not to dismiss, I, I know, I, I'm smart enough to know how uh, uh, ignorant I can be. So it, it's basically, uh, I would go through the exercise and think through <laughs> what's going on. Okay. Well, why, why, from her point of view, we, we talked earlier yeah. about why she didn't pick Josh Shapiro. Mm -hmm. And that's admitted. That's not like some weird conservative. Like even Van Jones is talking about that, and like that he's Jewish. We just heaven forbid we have a Jewish person in the Hamas wing of the party, right? So that's known why she didn't go with. But why would you go with Waltz? Yeah, uh, it's a, a a few other quick ones on why you wouldn't go with him. First of all, Minnesota has been is the state that's been the longest uh, Democratic stronghold in the country. Yeah, Pennsylvania is a swing state. Yeah, so so that's that's number one. So. Uh, and then you've got, if you look at his record, 
Uh, he's a healthcare intuition for a Lee Lillian guy. He's a big George Floyd guy, as you mentioned. He's a big lockdown guy. He was one of the guys with one of those snitch hotlines for if you broke the lockdowns. So you're really in the lockdowns, which kill people. The lockdowns kill people. And um, the coronavirus, as the audience knows, I'm, I'm of the opinion the coronavirus was pretty bad and did kill a lot of people, particularly old people. But the lockdowns killed young people. You got them hooked on fentanyl, et cetera. And Walt was big into that stuff. So uh, it, it is, he's a, a, a gun, a, a, I mean, the gun stuff is all over the internet. I mean, what a goofball ball he is with the guns. Uh, it, we know what he is. He's a far left guy. That's his identity, it's who he is. Uh, he's a big anti-Trump guy, so he's not a unifier. Okay? Why pick him? Why, well, I have no idea. No, I'm just kidding. I, 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 why pick him? Um, it, it's the Hamas stuff. Um, the base is pro-Hamas, and uh, Waltz is a very soft on uh, Hamas, and he's very positive on uh, the idea that the party is too has too much allegiance to the Jews in Israel. Um, that's number one. And then number two is identity politics. And I think it was a hedge against having the first black female woman um, that would make it, I think, probably a pretty big gamble to, Pete, to put a Gretchen Whitmer or a Pete Buttigieg or someone like that on on the ticket. Um, I, I've been saying for a long time, and again, I, my predictions have not been perfect in this election cycle, as you know, Mike. I've been saying I think Newsom's too smart to be on this ticket because it's yes. just too messy. Um, and um, I think that that does look pretty good in retrospect that that was a pretty good analysis. Yeah. So then who do you put on it? Um, that narrows it down to a Josh Shapiro, who the donors love, I think is much more compelling. The moderates would like him, but the pro Hamas base would not like him. Um, and uh, Mark Kelly, I think, was probably in a similar, similar vein. So Waltz is the pander to the hard left. They think they need the hard left to win. And I think that's what's going on here, is they honestly feel like that hard left, the pro Hamas crowd, is going to deliver them the election or they don't have a chance. The fact that there's that big of a pro Hamas base to be pandered to is concerning. That's the point. That is the crucial point of all the points. And then you realize he's like a bizarro world DEI pick. So you have the DEI pick and then the, the opposite of that, which is still its own DEI pick. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Kamala is too interesting looking, so we got to pick the guy who looks like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> like, that's the move. <laughs> uh, I want to play this clip for you, though, because this is the best I can come up with. I think he's some sort of folksy counter to JD. Uh, and here is the clip from last night that's making the rounds. And I almost want to leave the punchline out because there's two different conversations to have here. But let me just play the whole thing. Sure. I have 10 billion tabs open, so it's uh, taking its time. Here. And I gotta tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. He's willing to get off the couch and show up. So. Okay, so that that wasn't the clip I meant to play. That was, the, that was just the punchline. I, I left out. I'll find the clip at the beginning part. No, let's no, just, but it, 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 it is one to play. I'm, yeah. I'm excited about that clip because that's that's a, a sex joke about J.D. Vance. Yeah, and people look up online why it is. But I think that's what weirdos do. That's why I think he's weirdo waltz. And he acts like he's normal, but a guy who worships uh, the altar of George Floyd, a guy who wants to lock down children, and uh, if you break the lockdown, you uh, yeah, there's a snitch hotline to tattle to the government about it. Uh, and a guy who makes sex jokes about the vice presidential nominee when the country's already so divided that the move is not to elevate, it's not when they go low, we go high. The move is to make a sex joke about a guy um, who, uh, uh, by the way, 39 years old and uh, has a family of brown children. Um, I think it's weird. I think that's a weird thing to do for a guy to do within five minutes of being nominated. So that's my take. And I bet the people who like Hamas will disagree. But maybe if you don't like Hamas, maybe you'll be open-minded to this guy's weird and shouldn't be uh, given more power in this mm -hmm. country. Uh, just just alliteration itself. Camp on Tim and Weirdo Walt. The fact that they're going weirdo and they still went with a guy with the last name that starts with a W to open that call. I told, I told you, this is, this is, a, this is a intensely bad, intensely bad call. <laughs> even, even in the world of alliteration. All right, so uh, I do want to spend more time on the couch today because I like, sure. yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a weird sex joke. The 
fact, uh, the, the genesis of this, JD Vance having sex with a couch thing. And I mean, yeah. we're in a tricky spot, and you can tell me to end the conversation right now because this is the, this is the double bind they put you in. Is where they make up this ridiculous thing, mm. and you're damned if you do, damned if you don't talk about it, don't talk about it. But I, I think it's, let's just do it one time. So some sure. guy with like five Twitter followers, the nobody troll bot on Twitter, made up the story that J.D. Vance wrote in Hillbilly Elegy. It's not in Hillbilly Elegy. It's not there. But he said it's on page 179. It's not. It's not in the book at all. That J.D. Vance had sex with the couch. Then the AP, the Associated Press, came out and fact-checked. This guy with a total zero nobody loser on Twitter made up a ridiculous lie, and the Associated Press fact-checked it, said it was not true, but still gave it that air of you know, legitimacy to the point where now the vice presidential candidate can make a joke about it, and the whole arena goes nuts because they think it's hilarious and, and, and true. What, what is that? What are we to do with that in our... Well, I understand how something really shifted in a major way when, uh, after that debate, when the media, I think a lot of it was out of emotion, to be honest with you, uh, were so beside themselves with how bad the Biden debate was, that they joined this cabal of people um, that seemed like, you know, ended up being led by Obama, but it was, it was a lot of people who wanted Biden off the ticket. All of them now own this race. This is why that main congressman or whoever it was wrote that piece that I thought was pretty brilliant about how the Democrats need to take the L, that they need to keep stick with Biden, they're going to lose, but lose with dignity and move on. Um, everyone now on the left is invested in this. Um, everyone on the left has, e even if you look at some of the moderate candidates, the way the Josh appears in the world were trying to act like he was a hard leftist in the end to try to make sure he got nominated, everyone's invested in what's going on in this hour, in the outcome now. And so the media, in particular, needs to do whatever they can to win, and the best thing they can do to win is to not talk about the issues. Because once you get into all of the major issues that have affected America, um, a, a guy who let Black Lives Matter burn down his state, um, a woman who was named the most left-wing person in the Senate and was in charge of our border and failed on it, when you start talking about that stuff, then of course Trump's going to win. He's going to win by a lot. So all they want to do is make personal attacks on Trump and Vance and see if Trump and Vance are uh, are going to blow themselves up. That's, that's what they have to do. And Walt might be okay at that, actually, it, it, at that strategy. He's a more articulate than Harris is, and he is an attack dog naturally, um, which is typically a good role for vice presidents to be an attack dog. So, uh, but the media is all in on it. So the media would wants to talk about, um, does Vance have some perversion about a couch? The answer, of course, is no, it was made up. But they would rather talk about that than was Kamala really the most left-wing person in the Senate because she votes, you know, overwhelmingly for leftist issues. So 100% of the time she takes the leftist tack. So I think that's it in that show. That's what's going on. And just watch the media and the way they behave. The headlines yesterday, like, of how... Uh, the media was just, they, they were relishing Tim Waltz's music choice because he allegedly likes Taylor Swift and Beyonce. The, the, the most mainstream artist, the most normy, boring, um, I have no personality artist you could watch. Like all? But, yeah, the, the, that's, the, yeah no, but, 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 but that's all, that's what the media's acting like, it's so great. I'm not even saying if I like Taylor Swift and Beyonce, I happen to not like either, but let's... <laughs> But, but there's some people that are mainstream that I like. I'm not saying that you can't like them. I'm saying it's not interesting if you do, because that's what everybody likes. <laughs> and the media is counting it like this is some sort of, oh, he's a Swifty. This is amazing. Well, there's apparently billions of them. As I just watched that tour and all the coverage of it. There's a lot of people like Taylor Swift. That's not interesting. And that's what they want to write about. They don't want to write about what his positions are, him locking down kids, him and his snitch hotline, his open borders policy. They don't want to write. They don't want, they don't want to talk about that. So that's all they're going to do is find anything they possibly can to not talk about what he's all about. Even if it, if it comes to a, a Twitter troll account with eight followers uh, in the beginning. So what is your suggestion on how we should move forward with them continuing to bring up the couch and stuff like that? You got it. Just, to, just you got it. Just to find them for what, with what we know about them. and same thing with Harris. And uh, be patient and feel good. And we're we're in the driver's seat. Clearly, this is a pretty weak pick. It's another thing I want to say. This is weak. It's a weak move. It's not a position of strength. It's not a confident move. 
even if it works, and I'm not just counting it could work one in five, one in four, it's some, some high number, so that we need to be scared about it. Yeah. But um, I, this is not a sign of a confident and unified party. This is a sign of a divided, panicked party who feels like there's a massive disconnect between people the donors like, which is Harris and uh, Josh Shapiro, for different reasons. Harris for her Hollywood and Silicon Valley connection to Shapiro because he's a moderate Jewish guy from the Midwest. Uh, and the base, which likes Hamas, basically. And that's going to be tough for them to win in that environment. This is the beginning of the, that same part that I wanted to play here. Um, and this, I think, speaks to his, what would you call him, like an attack dog? That's sort of his, his natural mm -hmm. role. He's kind of like the capacity yeah. kind of folksy guy. Like all regular people I grew up with in the heartland, J.D. studied at Yale. Had his career funded by Silicon Valley billionaires. And then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. And I gotta tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. There it goes on for that. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. It's just such lies. Every word of that is he died, he paid for Yale and GI Bill. He got in because he distinguished himself. He was a veteran at that point. He went to State University for undergraduate. Um, and the book was uh, actually, uh, was a, a, a it, it was largely in praise of a disenfranchised community that had been ignore, ignored by both political parties, especially Democrats, for decades. So every it's all a troll. That's designed to make all of you in the audience outraged. So just know that that's the move. Instead of trying to unify uh, with people and be the president, be the vice president for everyone in this country. He's thinking of this audience with contempt. He's contempt for you, and just share that with anyone who feels comfortable voting for a guy who looks like Colonel Sanders because of how he looks. We had uh, a bunch of people from Minnesota calling today, which is awesome, and uh, a lot of insight that we have, we have most people are talking about. And one was that when we were running for the election, he talked about the people way out, they call it outstate, if you're in Minnesota, outside of Minneapolis, mm -hmm. they call it outstate. Um, there, there, there are people just amongst the rocks and the cows. There's nothing out there. There's no people out there. It's just rocks and cows. Just that contempt for country folk. Uh, that to the warbles were the same. Uh, and we just, it's, it's throughout the, the leadership of the Democratic Party. But they can't because all they need to win is Minneapolis and St. Paul. And that's it. So they can have that contempt and still be in power. Yeah, and that is part of the nature of, the, of this party is that they forgive them, um, they forgive their people, they don't tend to fight amongst themselves, and they ultimately forgive their people for just about anything. But the question is, it, does it get people, what gets people the ballot box at this point? What gets people to turn in their, their ballot? And I'm hoping that the public is going to see everything that we've been laying out over the last 15 minutes. Uh, and I and I feel pretty good that they will, but it's on us to do that and not to talk too much about J.D. Gaines' couch and talk about the issues. Um, but they are going to do their level best not to talk about the important stuff and um, not talk about how Tim Waltz is kind of a jerk also. He's kind of weird, kind of a jerk, and that that, that will come up enough. And he'll just be uh, a nice balance for different reasons to come on the ticket that I you know, I might just reach hard for the picture. It's really hard. The, uh, there's a documentary that came out a year or so ago called The Fall of Minneapolis. Uh, chronicles all the George Floyd stuff in St. Paul's So we're going to reach out again to the person who made that documentary. It is Collins, I think it's the name. Mm -hmm. And she, so I want to learn more about what he did exactly during the whole burning in Minneapolis. And of course his wife, <laughs> that clip around, where his wife talked about how she kept the windows open so she could smell the burning tires. What is that? Yeah. Well, we yeah. have weird, we have weird that. Uh, this is like weird, like Joker, like, like I don't, like, <laughs> like, like wafting in and soaking in the smell of your city burning down. It's just so bizarre. Um, but anyway, she going to well, but, but you saw Doug Hamill, uh, Emhoffer reached out. I'm going to be there for you. He said, "It's a, one of the weirdest guys on the planet, Doug Emhoff." And uh, by the way, just everyone is going to enjoy this. Uh, look at the front page of Fireport.com right now if you're listening live. I mean, we're going to find that Tim Waltz looks like a weirdo, and we're going to put the weirdest looking photos of this guy, and, and we're just going to, we're going to pepper our front page with them for the next four months. It's a, he can't take a natural photo. He is completely odd, uh, and um, it is just, it's just going to be really adorable. I'm just going to love doing it. You, I was speaking of, uh, last night, I think we're right now, it's a but last night you talked to, and the reason I brought up the following the opposite is because she also sure. has a story about uh, his National Guard service, or lack thereof. 
is, is that something by far is going to spend some time on? Um, yeah, it's the it's I haven't looked into it that much yet. I started reading that last night, uh, and the, he's been accused of stolen valor, and he has been suggested he might have lied about being a command sergeant major, and um, uh, it, there's some people who are saying that uh, he is. Uh, I would get the exact exact quote. Um, the this is. Uh, Let's see, I'm, I, I, I would, I, you know, I'm just going to direct people to an article we have on this at Redford.com, this is better. And then Kamala Harris's Vice President Pick, Governor Tim Walz, facing stolen ballot accusations from Christina Wong, a very serious reporter. 7,100 comments on this, so people are fired up about this. Um, but he served in the Army National Guard, and the, his bio um, says he, he lists a higher rank than he served, and that's, that's a no-no. So, uh, we're looking at all the details. I don't have them totally uh, in categorical by fingertips, but that's why I rely on my people by part and look and check out all the details. This proceeding is very, very sharp and stuff. Um, last thought here, I'll just talk about the map uh, real quick. So, and I have not yet, until yesterday, gone to 270 to But mm -hmm. talking about Josh Shapiro and how that would have made Pennsylvania, like, probably Democrats would have won Pennsylvania, right? I think that's like a fair assumption. So, mm -hmm. I'm just playing around with the map here, and maybe I'm way ahead of myself. But, if you give the Democrats Pennsylvania, for, oh, let's go to, if Trump wins Pennsylvania and flips Georgia, he wins. Yeah. Here you go. And, right. and so, so, but let's give them Pennsylvania. All they have to do is win, Trump has to win Arizona or Nevada, Minnesota or, or Wisconsin, or Michigan, Michigan or Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you just, either one, just either, sorry, let me say again, either Nevada or Arizona or Michigan or Wisconsin, give them Pennsylvania. And win Georgia, and that's it. Like the map seems to be in Trump's favor, but the cheating way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what are we to do with that? Sure, and I'll say I want everybody to feel jacked up, and we should. It was a great day yesterday uh, because because again they needed a moderate, and they picked the leftist, and uh, they needed someone who was exciting, and they picked someone with 25% name recognition at the most. <laughs> so, and a lot of that name recognition is we knew he was the guy who let his state burn down under Black Lives Matter, and then they re-elected him. So, uh, it's weird. It's weird stuff. So, it's weirdo behavior from weirdo Walt and um, whoever still likes the guy. So, uh, what what could it help with? Maybe with, I'm concerned about Georgia, and um, I'm concerned a little bit about Michigan, because Michigan has got that hardcore uh, anti-Jewish vote in certain pockets. I think Walt helped with that. And Georgia I'm concerned about this because, you know, the Trump rally in Georgia, he's going after Governor Kemp, um, he's going after Governor Kemp's wife, um, and the Stacey Abrams machine organizing the low info low propensity voters turning balance. I, I, I still think we should Pennsylvania for the election laws that we talked about nonstop on this program in the run up to twenty twenty after Kremers. So there's still lots of reasons to be concerned with those states, but it does feel like the jigsaw puzzle gets easier to piece together for Trump after yesterday. But uh, let's not be too too cocky. But I feel like maybe Walt's a little bit better for Michigan and Georgia than in Shapiro, um, but significantly worse on Pennsylvania, which is great news. We have a time coming up in a minute, but did you see the men's mile run yesterday? I didn't. I love the men's mile run. I wish I saw it. I had, had no TV time yesterday. Mm. It was... Do you know what happened? No. Okay, I don't want to give it away. Uh, but I'll tell you the time. Uh, growing up, everyone knows, like, a good time for the mile. Like, like you know, yeah, four-minute mile. Right? Like, everyone knows. Do you know how fast these guys are running the mile these days? Um, low 340s. I, 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 that's probably, I, I, when they run, when did they run a four minute mile? Like, 70 years ago? I don't even, I don't even yeah. know, like, yeah, four. So it's been a while, yeah. right? So, so what would you say, low 40s? Uh, the low 340s, yeah. Yeah, like 343. Would be good. That'd be a good yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. The guy won in 327. You're kidding me. That is. 27. That, that is off the charts. Okay, can I, I know you got to run, but I got to share this because I've been running a little bit. So um, I've been going. Um, I'm, I'm in decent shape for me lately, partially because I don't have to get up at 2 a.m. to do three hours of live radio. Um, so it's been it's been it's been good for my health um, in some ways. So sad for my brain in other ways. Um, and um, I'm thinking if I could do, uh, I 
my goal, and I'm thinking about, could I, I've never run a sub five minute mile, and I have the thing I would wow. like to. Wow, and that's I, fast. It's, it's fast. I, I was always fast growing up, and but my lowest is in the five teens, and I was thinking I'm closing on 40, could I, could I run on the five minute mile? And I can, I think I got 530 now, I haven't tried it, but I think I got 530, so I've become close to my best ever. Uh, just the thought that I could run my best ever maybe jeopardize my health in order to do it. And then I could <laughs> lose. I, 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 yeah, your hair will never recover. You know, I, I, might, I might not be able to do it f physically. And I think I'm the fastest person in my gym. I, it's not a hardcore gym. I go to a gym. And I think I'm the fastest person on people who go there. And then I, I can lose by, you know, 40%. A you lap. Know. <laughs> yeah, like a lap and a half. Like that, yeah, this, yeah, you could get lap two, and they'd be like wrap it up, like on their last. Yeah, I, I could, I, I could get lapped. I could actually, I would get lapped. The yeah, math is there. It's yeah. more. I would get lapped. Yeah. And, like that's fine. My buddy, yeah, I, I, oh yeah. A couple so years fun. ago, we, we were like, my buddy and I were like, let's see how fast we can run a uh, one lap, yeah, four hundred. And yeah. we like trained for a couple weeks or whatever. And I got to one oh four, and then my buddy pulled his hamstring and we couldn't go. But yeah. no, but if you're trying to go five minutes, that's one fifteen four times. Yeah. That yeah, is it's a lot. And these guys were holding, I don't, what's the math of that? 53s? Or something like that? Like, what in the world? So you gotta watch those, it's amazing. Music. Okay, so I'm going to, and this is one, and I'll just put a political button on this, and then uh, uh, this is yours, too fun, Mike. So it's a big to do a spin off show at some point. Yeah, we started, we started with the important part, we should have started with yeah. that. But this is what this makes me very sad how I feel like I have to hate the Olympics because of their real BS, because. It's undeniably cool to run a 520-something mile or whatever, and, and I want to watch that, and I want to enjoy it, and I don't want to be distracted. And Hollywood is, you know, has gone through this, and now sports is going through this, and please don't make us hate sports. Uh, please don't make us hate, hate, hate what's going on in sports, which should be, I, I mean, watching the elite athletes, some of these people in the Olympics, it, it, it's... We want to uh, to relish their athletic ability. We don't want to think of all the political stuff and the trans nonsense. And please spare us from this Olympics. But they won't. They can't help themselves. Three twenty-seven. And we'll, we'll say for another day that the world record holder, of, uh, the pole vaulter guy, representing mm -hmm. Sweden. Sweden. We saw the, my wife and I were listening to the interview with him, and we're like, that doesn't sound Swedish. He was born in Louisiana, but wow. he went to Louisiana State. He's born from Louisiana, he's in Louisiana. It's a Louisiana guy. Yeah. But we'll yeah. save that for another day. That's that's his world without him. Uh Alex Marlowe, he's the editor in chief of uh, Breitbart.com. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. We got a uh, congresswoman coming up next, uh, representing uh, the John Deere, or the, one of the John Deere factories. We'll talk about that. And then Caroline Levin is the press secretary of Trump coming up after that. Mike Slater, Breitbart News Daily, spread the word. <laughs> officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left lunatics who are angry that they're taking strong action on crime. We're going to protect them. Conservative principles live here. This is Serious X in Patriot. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no coverage at all. These days, you